Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live and uh, going to touch on two subjects tonight. We're going to be getting a little taste into this uh, April the 8th eclipse that's coming. And uh, But if you want to know the deeper side of that, I am going to go on Patreon, uh, share in more in depth about uh, this eclipse on uh, April the 8th, 2024. At first, I was going to kind of steer clear from this subject a little bit. Uh, but the more and more I see things that are being said, the more I realize that uh, there there are, in fact, tonight we're going to kind of hit a bit more on the biblical aspect on Patreon. I'm going to go deeper from different angles on it. I'll be doing that tomorrow. Uh, but I'm going to share something with you that could very well be a biblical aspect from a totally different angle. Maybe something nobody's even thought about before. Uh, especially in light of this one conference I know that's going on, a little event uh, that I saw that took place in this conference I'll share with you as well, and it has a lot to do with the biblical side of that. The other aspect, and um, well, maybe I should have done this video separately, and that's going to be the inheritance. Um, and I, just, I may just do that separately regardless. I may put the inheritance over on Patreon as well. But uh, first, I want to get into this subject here. We know April the 8th, 2024, total eclipse going across the nation. They talk about comes across Mexico, across Texas, uh, up and all the way out, coming out all the way up there uh, in uh, above New York area there, the very top end of the United States. Because this, there are several cities of Nineveh that cross this, and by the way, it's not actually, I've heard some people say seven, it's not really seven cities named Nineveh, but nonetheless, it does catch your eye biblically because Nineveh did repent. Israel did not because Jesus even uses Nineveh, uh, Jonah, as part of that when he says, you know, that the men of uh, Nineveh would rise up in, uh, in that generation and condemn Israel because they did repent at the preaching of Jonah, whereas Israel did not. And what I am finding even today is that the men of the United States, the evangelical, the pro-Zionists that are actually supporting the very, the very country that Jesus brought and indicted. He indicted Israel for the deaths all the way from the time of Abel all the way down to his time. He indicted that generation for all those crimes against humanity. Uh, and even they finally killed the very Son of God. But he did say that the men of Nineveh would rise up in the judgment and they would condemn that generation. But nowadays we have another generation and it mainly spurred here from the United States through a Darby Schofield doctrine that has blinded many evangelical teachers into believing scriptures were fulfilled or that have not been fulfilled that were fulfilled. And I want to kind of just share some insights with you. By the way, too, CERN, there are some people saying CERN will fire up on April the 8th. Uh, USA Today uh, kind of debunked that claim. It actually fired up in March, not in April. It's already going right now. Although I do disagree with the USA Today article when it says it cannot open a portal. Oh, yes, it does open a portal. We know that from the different uh, insights that I've gotten from other scientists around the world that, yes, they've opened up as many as uh, seven dimensions already. So that may be considered more of a classified subject, but uh, that part we do know is true. And yeah, it, maybe it could, maybe it is going to have some interesting impacts along the way. Not only that, but the different, uh, uh, you know, the, the sun and the things that are happening on the sun, uh, the different uh, ejections that are happening, coming and hitting our magnetosphere, weakening the magnetosphere. The Hydrant Collider, not just one, we have multiple Hydrant Colliders, right? Those things all going off at the same time. The eclipse itself, though, could actually just be more as a sign, a sign of the time. But the question would be is, what sign would it be? Well, I actually was taking a look more at Matthew 24. And taking you into the Hebrew Matthew here, we'll blow it up a little bit bigger. I want to make sure that everybody can see this very clearly as we go through this. 
Uh, and let's back up because this is what's very important is what happens before this, right? Except those days were few. No flesh would be saved before the sake of the chosen. Those days will be few. Um, at that time, if one should say to you, behold, the Messiah is here or there, do not believe it. You know, that's an interesting concept. At one time, I thought maybe that's just they're going to try to say, oh, Jesus was buried over here. We actually found his body through archaeological digs. And he said, no, that's not the case. But I have a feeling it's going to have everything to do with what I spoke to you recently about the kingdom of heaven is within you, right? And of course, I'm going into the inheritance. That's something my wife inspired uh, about three o'clock uh, last night or morning or three o'clock this morning when she was awake talking to me about uh, inheritance. And as uh, we were talking about the inheritance, uh, we're talking about biblical inheritance, that is. It dawned on me, you know, something maybe many of you already know, and that is that we have inherited everything that the Father has given to us, Jesus Christ. When he both died, buried, and resurrected, we had inherited everything. Everything he is, is our inheritance, right? So the question could be, behold, the Messiah is here or there. Do not believe it. Remember the scripture I shared with you the other day, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, but it's actually in you. And I think that may be more about it. Because false messiahs, watch this, because false messiahs and false prophets will arise. Wow, that's interesting. Because he does say, behold, the messiah is here. And he's saying to you, because false messiahs and false prophets will arise and they will give signs and great wonders that if it can be, they will come to lead the chosen astray. So they are going to bring out a mockery. They're going to bring out a false messiah. There's going to be more than one, Jesus says, and more than one false prophet. There's going to be multiple ones. Then if they should say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Behold, he is in the chambers, do not believe it. Behold, I told you before it happens. Again, Jesus said to his disciples, As the lightning comes from the east and is seen in the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. And don't forget, it's false prophets as well. And boy, do we never have a, we have a world full of false prophets. Wherever the body is, there will be gathered the vultures. Hmm. So in other words, if they do uh, tr to try to produce a false messiah, it's just a bunch of vultures there. They like to eat on dead things anyway, and we serve a risen Jesus Christ. Not a dead Christ, but a risen Christ. At that time, after the tribulation of those days, the sun will grow dark. Notice that. The moon will not give forth her light. The stars will fall from heaven and the host of heaven will be shaken. Now that is of an interest. If you notice, he said, at that time, after the tribulation of those days, the sun will grow dark. The moon will not give forth its light. That's very similar to that of an eclipse. Because it's a sun will grow dark. When, how does the sun actually grow dark? Well, the moon gets in the way. And as that moon begins to cover over the sun, it grows in darkness because as the moon crosses over, it grows dark. The moon can't give forth its light because why? The sun's on the back side of it, so therefore the moon doesn't give light. It's not reflecting light. Now it's blocking light. But then it says... The stars will fall from heaven, and the host of heaven will be shaken. Could that be, could it be meteorites? Could it be fallen angels coming to earth? Could it be something like that? And keep in mind, when we look at those events, that doesn't mean that it happens the same day that an eclipse were to happen. And quite frankly, have we seen the fulfillment of the part above this eclipse? Not necessarily, there's been all kinds of false Christ, I will agree with that, because the word Christ means anointed ones. There's been a lot of people claim to be anointed, not that they claim to be the Messiah, but they claim to be anointed. There's many of them that claim to be prophets that are false prophets. 
Even like recently in a meeting somewhere out in Texas, there was yet another person standing there declaring barefooted that they were barefooted because they had shalom for you. You know, interestingly enough, and I'll come right back here to Matthew 24 in a second. When you say you have shalom, let me show you what they're implying. They're actually implying to be anointed disciple of God. Okay, how do we know this? Because the scripture says, do not heap up silver and gold, nor have wealth in your purse, nor changes of clothes, nor shoes, nor a staff in your hand. The workman is worthy to receive enough for his food. In every city and every tower that you enter, ask who is the good man among them and there and remain until you go out. When you enter into the house, give to them a shalom, saying shalom to this house and shalom to all who dwell in it. If that house shall be worthy of your shalom, will we'll come upon it. But if it is not worthy, your shalom will return to you. When one does not receive you or listen to you, you shall go out from that house and shake off your feet from the dust. Truly, I say to you, it will be better off, better for Sodom and Gomorrah in that day than for that city. Behold, I send you like sheep in the midst of wolves. Be as crafty as serpents, humble as doves. You know what's interesting, though? I'm finding that the serpents are trying to mimic that of what was meant for the true children of God. That would be anything taken lightly. In fact, interestingly enough, remember I shared with you just recently a Tennessee tag where Tennessee has this bold statement on their tag. It has a rattlesnake coiled up on the left side and underneath it it says, Do not tread on me. And yet Jesus gave us authority to tread on the head of serpents and scorpions. And I thought, here we have one of the chief Bible Belt states promoting a tag that has a rattlesnake coiled up and says, do not tread on me. In other words, those of you that are true believers that have the faith to tread on serpents, that you have the power, the authority to know that you can put that Nephilim demon at bay, that reptilian, they're telling you, don't tread on me. Well, that must tell you that there must be a whole lot of reptilians in that state. Then I come to find out Florida also now has that same type of tag with a rattlesnake and a caption underneath it. Do not tread on me. That's becoming an epidemic if you ask me. Anyway, so going back over here to what we were looking at. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in the heaven, and the families of the earth will weep and will see the Son of Man on the clouds of heaven with a great host of a dreadful appearance. He will send his angels the trumpet with a great shout to gather his chosen from the four winds and from the end of heaven unto the other. From, from the fig tree, learn the parable. When you see its branches and leaves sprouting, know that he is near and to the gates. So April the 8th, it seems to me just to be more another eclipse. But could it be more significant as a sign that we are like Nineveh? Nineveh at least repented. But what's really sad in this case here, if there truly was a Jonah coming to call for a nation of repentance, would this nation repent for supporting a genocide in the Middle East? Would this nation repent for supporting a war in Ukraine that has also become a genocide of the Slavic race of people that you were given that information that they're doing exactly that, killing off a certain group of people that doesn't meet to their standards. There are many good Jewish people in the world. I would share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what I would do. You know, and as you look at the scriptures, so many scriptures that could be looked at upon this, you know, 
This is the one I said to you a moment ago. This is over in uh, Ma uh, Ma excuse me, Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, and rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Also looking at the uh, scripture of Matthew 23, Jesus identified who those serpents were. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Interesting, isn't it? Pharisees, hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, and you neither go in yourselves, neither you suffer you them that are entering to go in. You devour widows' houses for a pretense, make long prayer, therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Very religious, Pharisees, that is. That's modern-day Orthodox Judaism. Not all Orthodox Judaism, by the way. There's a lot of good Orthodox Jews that also would not stand for the genocide of the Palestinian people and the nearly nearing 20,000 children that have died. That'd be like two of Trump's largest rallies ever. Now that's adults in those rallies, but imagine if that was all little children and they everyone died. And we justify that? How? How do you justify that? Oh, I'm sorry, Amalek, right? They really look like Nephilim, don't they? Let me read to 115, and we're going to go down to about verse uh, 30 something here in a moment. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. They're doing that with the Noahide movement. And so, if they send somebody in your city that's barefooted, quote unquote, preaching the gospel of Zionism to you, they can shake the dust all they want, won't do a bit of good. It has nothing to do with anything. It's a mockery. Because after all, Jesus said, You blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is, which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. Even so, you outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, because you build the tombs of the prophets, garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Now, this is where he indicted them too. Wherefore, behold, I send to you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some of them shall you kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city that upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcaeus, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I send to you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So how are you going to answer it then? Hmm. I'll save this part here about the kingdom for a, for a separate message. It really doesn't go together here. I wanted to share those insights with you, though, mainly because of looking at this eclipse. And, um, you know, I have a feeling most of, for the most part, things will come and go. And it won't be a lot different. But in time, if it is, if it happens to be anything to do with Matthew 24, if it is the eclipse that Jesus spoke about in Matthew, somewhere along the way, we can anticipate some very evil entities coming down. We certainly already see the false prophets and the false messiahs on every angle and every corner bringing the false gospel 
to the people. They are truly wolves among the sheep. And the odd thing is, as much as Jesus said the things that he said about what he was dealing with in his day with the orthodoxy, you would think that Christians would be more interested in trying to help the orthodox community to recognize what Jesus said in the first place rather than sucking up and promoting the very system that still condemns Jesus Christ and would have a Noahide law that if you dare declare him to be the Son of God, which would be considered blasphemy, as Pilate declared. Not Pilate, but Caiaphas, excuse me. You would be put to death, according to Noahide laws, according to the Talmudic version of Noahide laws. So think about it. And no, they don't do it themselves. Just like with Jesus, the Jewish people never killed Jesus. I'll agree with that. They did condemn him to death. But they had the Romans carry out the dirty work. Just like the Noahide Freemason, 21st degree Mason, is going to carry out the death sentence in this day and age. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. If you feel on your heart to stand for what is really true, support the work we do. This here, our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, who was behind the attack. We shared a very interesting video there with you. Uh, and also over on iConnectFX.com. That's one place, by the way, if you ever want to be able to have freedom of speech, that's a good place to go and set up an account there. You can set up for free. they got all kinds of things in there. It's really grown into a massive platform there, including even your own shopping store you could have amazing amount of things that could be done over at iConnect but uh, just to share that insight with you we appreciate the work that they've done there but if you'd like to support the work we do you can do it several ways one right here by mail donate institute do noon institute p.o box 156 sunbright tennessee 37872 it's also in the top of the video above my head at the entire time uh, or you can click right there and donate online or even if you are on iconnectfx.com if you happen to be on iConnect, then you can also uh, you can donate right there on any of the videos that we might have up. In fact, this one right here, a good example. Uh, I will tell you one thing that's interesting about iConnect too that I'll, I'll share with you. You can donate right up under that video there, as you can see there. Um, let me let me just sign in. One thing I'm going to quickly show you that I've always found fascinating about this site. Um, that may not let me do it this time around here because I don't. Here we go. iConnect has a real time counter. Um, and it takes only a day or so before you actually get to see the real views of your video. But that's one of the things I really like about this channel as well. Besides the multiple languages there, you take this video here. The 4,000 views is what they're saying, YouTube is saying that we actually received because we are embedded in our YouTube channel as well, right? But if I want to know what our, my views really are, I come over here and I click on that little view right there, that little viewfinder for the country. It pops up. It tells me all the countries in the world, where we're being viewed at, which country. You can just hover over it. Kenya, we had one person in Kenya watch it. Over in Uganda, one person there, 66 people in South Africa, one in uh, Nambia, uh, seven in Brazil, four in Chile, Colombia, four, right, 10 in Mexico. But then we get to the United States, 6,732 in the U.S. alone. It's not 4,000, is it? What about Canada? 4,458. We're already at over 11,000 views. All right, what about the UK? Wow, almost 7,000 views. So nearly 20,000 views now. Uh, not many in Australia this time, only 90. Sometimes Australia is pretty high as well, but they weren't this time around. Russia, only five. Then you got all these other European countries, 45 in Germany, France, etc. Nice thing is we're always able to see what's exactly going on. Norway, pretty good size as well, 973. 
It's over 20,000 views. And yet YouTube said only 4,000. That's one of the cool things about this platform that I really like as well. Anyway, thank you for listening. God bless you. Join us tomorrow over on our Patreon channel dot com forward slash Israeli News Live. I'm going to I'll share a little bit about that insight on uh, uh, the inheritance. That's some that's something that will build your faith. Eventually, we'll put that over here on Israeli News Live too. I always share teachings here uh, as well or either that or on Danoon Institute, our YouTube channel there. You can subscribe there. I uh, don't load very often. A lot of it just stays here, but uh, but every so often I'll drop it in over there as well. And uh, so anyway, God bless you. But Patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live that and also going deeper into the issue about uh, I say deeper because there are some things that I do do know, and I'm still trying to find some of those issues there. It's the only reason I haven't released that video as of yet that gets into some interesting aspects about Jonah's name, what it means, uh, the fish, things like that, and even in other writings that are out there. Could there really be something that we've overlooked? I think so. God bless you.